They called the country Al-Andalus. This is an Arabic word. And it means something to the effect of to become green at the end of summer. To become green like a garden at the end of the summer. And it was such a beautiful place. And the way they describe um, the cities in uh, Al-Andalus of, Tol of Toledo and, and Seville and Granada or Granada and, Cor and Cortaba, Valencia and the areas, the descriptions that come in the literature's beautiful descriptions of, of people being able to live what I would call in a holistic fashion. They were able to develop science in such a way that the science did not destroy the environment. This is a very important accomplishment they made. It wasn't the size of their buildings. It was not the, the, the size of their guns. But they were able to, for instance, take water and, and bring the water down from a mountain using aqueducts, using canals, and canal it all through the cities so that every house had access to running water. And they did that without destroying anything or damming anything up or blocking anything. They did it in such a way they were using gravity. This is a holistic way of approaching things. And if you go to Granada today, you will still see the waterworks are being used from the time of the Muslims. The water is flowing all over the place. And, and this was a great accomplishment that they made. Among the products that were introduced into the West through Al-Andalus, I'll, I'll name a few of these products to you. Cotton, uh, paper, glass mirrors, street lamps, salt, colored glass, silk, satin, pepper, cinnamon, handkerchiefs, deodorant, kerosene, linen, firearms, cotton balls, paper money, postage stamps, book binding, clocks, ceramic tiles, nitric acid, soap, astrolabs, compasses for navigation, slide rules, rulers, surgical instruments, windmills, spinning wheels, rose water, maps, globes, citrus and, and nectar fruits, carpets, eyeglasses, curtains, test tubes, porcelain, fine furs, velvet, almanacs, and encyclopedias. So you, you can see right away that, that some of the contributions that they have made, that's a legacy in itself. Because we're, we are benefiting from this, and, and I can go on with the, the, the different aspects of culture that the Muslims developed in that part of the world and other parts of the Muslim world, and they made it in such a way that it was usable for Western society, and it helped Europe to come out of the Dark Ages. Because again, if you read in most of the history books, after the fall of the Roman Empire, then they say it's the Dark Ages, right? And the lights go out. And it's usually a little chapter. Then the Renaissance. The Renaissance is back in, the lights are on, and everything is going. What happened between the year 700, okay, to 1500? What happened in that time? It was the Dark Ages? It was the Golden Age of Islam. It was the golden age of Islam. And I want to just talk about some of the contributions that were made by Muslims. And this can get very complicated. But I just want to talk about some of them tonight, just to show you some of the legacy that came from Spain and from Baghdad and from Cairo and, and Qirawan, Morocco, and all over the Muslim world. In mathematics, Al-Khawarizmi, Thabit Al-Mahani, Ibn Yunus, Ibn Hamza, there's a number of names, Muhammad bin Ahmed, some of the achievements made, they found, they founded, they began algebra, and, and symbols and equations, develop Arabic numerals, sifr, zero, Arabic numeral system. They established a logarithm, they founded general, the general formula for solving third degree equations. They founded trigonomic ratios, formulas, and equations. And you can continue to go on and you'll see calculus and trigonometry and all of these uh, areas of math have a debt to Islam. In physics, Ibn al-Haytham, al-Biruni, Ibn Yunus, there's a number of names. They established the science of power or mechanics. They described the center of gravity. They described gravity. So when that apple hit Newton in his head, Okay, he was probably reading an Arabic book. 
and, and it woke him up from his sleep, and then he turned to the page on gravity. But what comes to us, the apple hit him in his head, and they say he discovered gravity. Muslims had, had described gravity in details long before Isaac Newton. Also, um, they described mechanical properties of geometric bodies. They developed the hydrometer, aerometer, the lever, balance, scale. They measured specific gravity of different substances. They invented the pendulum, the spring and wall clock. Also you find in chemistry, Khalid ibn Yazid, Jabir ibn Hayyan, Al-Kindi, Al-Razi. You find they introduce atomic theory of matter. They developed processes of evaporation, sublimation, crystallization, distillation, filtration, pigmentation, melting. They introduce methods of steel making, metal work. They develop procedures for dyeing of cloths and textiles. They establish preparations, uh, preparation methods of chemicals, sulfuric, nitric and hydrochloric acids. Ammonium chloride, silver nitrate, mercuric oxide, chloride, sulfide, sodium. They develop chemo chemical processes and methods for manufacturing of glass, soaps, perfumes, resins, oils, paints, paper, sugar, gunpowder. They introduce the uses of jars and flasks, scales and tubes. And you, you can go on in terms of the things they were introducing. In astronomy... Al-Battani, Al-Biruni, Al-Faraghani, and you can go on. They develop astrolabs and sextants, prepared star catalogs and tables of planetary motion, named over 200 stars with Arabic names. They proved the earth as a spherical shape. They calculated the length of terrestrial degree, determined the earth's circumference and diameter. They measured solar inclination angle. They charted the positions and orbits of stars and planets. In medicine, you find Ar-Razi ibn Sina, they call him Avensina. In his, in his work, Al-Qanun Fit-Tib, the law in medicine, you find they performed gynecology, obstetrics. They wrote medical encyclopedias. They performed therapy procedures. They prepared mercury ointment. They discovered a blood circulation and described the pulmonary circulation and the function of, of lungs. They um, recognized the contagious nature of tuberculosis and the distribution of disease by water and soil. They performed surgical treatment of eyes, ears, and teeth. They used and described over 200 surgical instruments. Over 200 surgical instruments. It's amazing. They describe 130 eye diseases, and they characterize 143 drugs. In pharmacology, Jabir ibn Hayyan, ibn al-Bitar, Dawood al-Antaqi, Ali ibn Isa, they prepared alcohol, acids, nitrates, carbonates. They introduce the use of um, picrotoxin. They prepared chemical medicaments in pills and solutions. They established chemist shops for dispensing prescriptions. They introduced to Europe quite a number of medicines and herbs which betray their Arabic name. Al-Kanna, Alcohol, Al-Kahul. Alcohol is Arabic word. Al-Kali, Al-Falfa, Camphor, Cotton, Hakim, Jasmine, Saffron, etc. In geography, Hisham ibn al-Kalbi, Al-Yaqubi, Ibn Jubair, Al-Idrisi, Al-Mas'udi, and you can go on. They invented many geographic and surveying instruments and devices. They prepared many accurate and detailed nautical and land road maps of the world. They calculated and prepared ephemeris tables of ocean tides and seasonal winds. They described the lands and the natives of the New World in their reports.